In criminal procedure, the rule is one information, one offense. So for every offense, bawat isang offense, you only file one information. Basis, that is your section 13 of your rule 110, a complaint or information must charge but one offense. But take note that this is only the general rule because there is an exception and the exception is when the law prescribes a single punishment for various offenses, then even if that com uh, information com contains two or more offenses, then that is allowed because the law prescribes a single punishment. Common example Jan is yung Article 48 ng Revised Penal Code. Example, rape with homicide, kidnapping with serious physical injuries. Then in that instance, you can file only one information. So again, take note, in criminal procedure, one information, one offense. So let us just say that the famous person now is Senator Robin Padilla. Senator Padilla committed four offenses, violation of BP-22, rape, murder, and um, estafa. So in that case, hindi mo pwedeng pagsamasamahin yan sa iisang information. Dapat for every offense, there, on, there should only be one information. So one information for rape against Senator Padilla, another information for violation of BP-22, another information for estafa, and another information for homicide. So that is the meaning of that. If you will be asked by your professor to explain the concept of duplicity of the offense, then the answer is, it is the joinder of two or more distinct and separate offenses in the same information. It is the joinder of two or more distinct and separate offenses in the same information. And in criminal procedure, this is not allowed because again, just like what we said, for every offense, there should only be one information that is very clear according to Section 13 of your Rule 110. Exception, when the law prescribes a single punishment. For you to recall this, let's distinguish this to your civil procedure. Sa civil procedure ba, can you join? Is joinder allowed? The answer is definitely Yes, that is the famous Section 5, Rule 2 of your Rules of Court, the joinder of causes of action. Ano ang sinasabi ng Section 5? A party in one pleading can assert as many causes of action as he may have against an opposing party subject to the following requirements. Number one. There should be compliance with the rules on joinder of parties. Number two, the joinder should not include special civil actions or actions governed by special rules. Number three, if the scenario is there are many causes of action and between the same parties but pertain to different venues or jurisdictions, like for example, one of the causes of action is within the jurisdiction of the MTC, the other one is with the RTC, then in that case, ang sinasabi ng rules, joinder is allowed in the RTC provided one of the causes of action falls within the jurisdiction of RTC and the venue lies therein. And the last rule or the last requirement is number four. This is the totality rule. If all the causes of action are principally for recovery of money, then in that case, where are you going to file that uh, the case? Then you have to get the aggregate, aggregate amount claimed because that will be the test of jurisdiction. So take note ha, kung sa civil procedure ini-encourage ang pag-join ng as many causes of action, this is the complete um, opposite in your civil procedure, joinder of two or more distinct and separate offenses in the same information is not allowed unless the law prescribes a single punishment. 
What is your remedy, attorney, if an information contains not only one offense but two or more offenses? Like for example, a client or the accused went to your office and he said that, Attorney, I received an information nung binasa mo, nakita mo na yung iisang information, dalawa ang nakasulat na offenses, violation of BP-22 and murder. So, in that case, what are you going to do? You are going to file a motion to quash. That is your Rule 117. And what is your basis? Your basis is that the information contains more than one offense or the information charged more than one offense. And when are you going to file your motion to quash? You need to file this before the accused enters his plea or before arraignment. Next, but what will happen if yung information na yon hindi ka nakapag-file ng motion to quash, nagtuloy-tuloy, then section 3 of your rule 120 speaks of that scenario. If two or more offenses are charged in a single complaint or information and the accused fails to object to it before trial, then, ano ang gagawin ng court? The court can still convict that accused of as many offenses as are charged and proved and imposed on the accused the penalty for each offense, setting out separately the findings of fact and law in each offense. So again, ha, take note of the correlation. Rule 110, Section 13, you relate it to your Rule 117, Section 3, and then you go to your Rule 120, Section 3. Kung hindi nakapag-object, kung hindi nakapag-file ng motion to quash, then the, the, uh, the court can still convict the accused as long as it was proven.